I'll, I'll say this when when it goes live on YouTube. It's going to be hilarious because um, we've got four over four people watching, four people waiting. Matt's been waiting. He's saying, "Where are you? We're here. We're here." What I should have done is started before Phil was here because I could have pretended to be Holly Willoughby and <laughs> said, "Are you okay? I hope so." It feels very strange indeed sitting here without Phil, but he's here, so it's kind of ruined that joke. So never mind. I feel shaken, troubled, let down, and worried for the well-being of people on all sides, especially after Tom Lynham dropped that ball. Is that what she said? That's what she said? Yeah. Bloody Tom Lynham, she said. Oh. I'll scrap the magic weekend now. Just uh, <laughs> take it back. Leeds can, you know, not have the two points that Cassidy got. Mm. Oh. <sighs> but it's obvious which is the first game of the season Whitefield are going to win. Well, the first game next season. No, it's going to be on Sunday. Well, no, I mean, do I go? I mean, that's the big thing. I don't even know what to email. It's Connor's gone. Oh, no, who, who do you email? Good luck, Connor, in your future endeavours. Yes, at the um, gas board or wherever yeah. it is you are. It's, uh, oh. I, I, I can hear noise. Uh, Matt says, hopefully be back next year at Newcastle. I mean, we will talk about the Magic Weekend, obviously, because uh, it happened. Um, Phil, you were there on the Saturday. I was. I watched it on telly. Was Kevin Sinfield there? I mean, his book was all over the place. It's all in the adverts. Uh, it? The adverts of him were there. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't think he was actually physically there. But uh, he must be the only his place presence, not been. His yeah. presence was there. I did. We thought we'd pay homage. Yeah, and and yeah, image of the week in League Express, which is a, a nonsense anyway. Not the League Express, but the image of the week. They've given it to uh, oh, got my sound on. To what's his name? Um, Tyson Fury, who I've hilariously muted uh, mentions of on Twitter, so I didn't know he was wearing a Queensland shirt. But it should have been. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ange. I come bearing gifts. A man with biscuits. With these you caramels, you're really I'd, I'd love to see your notes are pretty comprehensive yeah. this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally blank. No, they're on the other side. They're on the other side, look. Oh. This is my dessert. Sure. Surely Doddy Weir's sons with the Doddy Weir shirt on was the image of the week. Not that image of the week. Is, it could have been anything. Tom Lyman dropping the ball. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Was it, was it magic? Um, for the hours you were there's, there. there's a couple of things I think need um, need to be mentioned that probably uh, aren't included in the because the crowd went up it was a huge success without wishing to appear in any way negative about something that, that has the seeds of being a great event but we don't actually know what that is firstly it done half help when the weather's good yep yeah. Um, and it was glorious and it felt fabulous walking around the city beforehand when all the shirts were there because the sun was shining you wanted to have a coffee out in the open or meet up with people outside and and you know I think if we were being honest and saying it had been pouring with rain it wouldn't have felt quite the same um, so that's one thing I think the other thing is 1100 more people were there I'm not sure that justifies a, a concept you know I, I don't know if it's a selling point when you say it's the sixth best crowd we've had out of 16. That might have been... You know, that 1,100 could well have just been Warrington fans who were playing a lot better this oh, year than they were last here's year. Here's the obvious example. Lee and not Toulouse. Yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, before we get carried away that just because the crowd went up when we're still coming back from years where, you know, COVID interrupted, yes, there was a rail strike and I get that. And yes, there's a cost of living crisis. But I'm not sure that we got any more people that went there who wouldn't normally go to an ordinary round of Super League games and that's where you have to make the economics match the fact that those who went had a fabulous experience my question to you would be how many Geordie voices did you hear inside the stadium uh, one I spoke to Jordan Robinson um, doesn't quite slightly, count doesn't, yeah, doesn't quite, quite count. count but do you know uh, why Newcastle are we General doing manager. it is the question that we need to yeah. ask and what are we I, I was told by um, by somebody who, who looks at the figures that anything over 60,000 attendance gives a profit back to the clubs so again 63,000 it's not going to be a huge amount to each of them No, I think is that sufficient reason to do it I love Magic Weekend so I'm I'm biased, so I think it should stay. To be honest, so I'll put my cards on the table. I, I enjoy it as a concept. I think it's great. Um, but you're absolutely right. The numbers have gone up ever so slightly. Cost of living crisis, rail strike. Nevertheless, I was surprised actually how healthy the crowd looked. I wasn't yes. necessarily expecting it to be up. So maybe that's maybe that's why it's seen a little bit, bit little bit more positively. The fact it is up, although albeit crowds have gone up this year, as we've talked about before, across across the club so 
Yeah, I, I think the point remains for uh, IMG and the RFL. If this was a cash cow, it would be staying, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. I suspect it's not a cash cow. Um, and so therefore you have to wonder what's the purpose of the event if it if it's not about raising revenue um, why does it exist having keep going back to Newcastle you're not sort of fulfilling this uh, idea that you're spreading the game necessarily mm-hmm. if you keep going back to the same venue because one, one of the ideas really to begin with was about taking it to different venues which I get but I think as a city and as a, as a venue it works really well for the fans doesn't it yes. because you're right in the city centre you, you, you're right in the heart of things a bit like Cardiff um, whereas it didn't work as well at a place like Murrayfield out on the edge etc so, Liverpool yeah I, yeah, this, for the same reason um, so I, I think it's a, a bigger picture question isn't it about what is the purpose of the event why does it exist and then if you're going to retain it it has to generate profit otherwise there's, there is actually no point doing it if you're in a business <laughs> yeah. to make money then I mean there is a there is such a thing as a loss leader and you could do it if you felt that what was coming back in commercially the the broadcast time that you were given um, negated the fact that there was hard cash at the end of it I think that there's a balance yeah. I think the issue that was um, that, that Robbery Jones was talking about um, as he was assessing whether it had been a success or not at the end of it uh, and gave away absolutely nothing um, was clearly it, it probably has to move so if the Challenge Cup is going back to sort of late May where it sits a lot more comfortably, I think, and, and makes sense as a narrative in, in the season that you, you know, you're having a, a round every couple of weeks and it builds up to Wembley and Wembley, then you put a bit more time and effort in to, to get it to sell out with the women's game and um, the eighteen ninety five Cup. You, you've got a chance of bringing that back to some of its past glory. What do you then do with Magic? Because if Magic moves at all to accommodate that, then we were talking to some of the fantastic, and I have to say the stewarding at Newcastle is brilliant. They're lovely people and they it cannot is. do enough yeah, for I you. I totally agree. They were saying, um, you've got a very small window for an event like this because in, I think it's next week, the picture, the, the Sam Fender concert and then the pitch is being ripped yeah. up. And then because they're in the Champions League, their season starts quite early. So if you don't really have it sort of now, you're going to rule out yeah, most it's Premier League been, football grounds. You're right, and it's always been the case. I remember doing a, one at Manchester City Stadium. It was red hot weekend that weekend, it was. and the pitch was bone dry because they'd stopped watering it basically because it was about to be dug up after the Magic weekend had finished. So it is, and I think on top of that, in terms of Newcastle, they go into the Champions League, aren't they? Which I think puts a further restriction on yeah. on the, their ability to host it as a, as a tournament, uh, and certainly not in the month of June. If you don't do it in June, then you, you're snookered because you can't do it for the grass growing period so then you're into August aren't you so you're probably looking at the old Challenge Cup final slot <coughs> of August Bank Holiday weekend maybe which you won't get kids which is part of the reason why, why exactly why that moved away <laughs> so that so I, un- I understand it's not whether we like it or not there is a bigger yeah. economic imperative yeah. here I, I enjoyed it though when it was in the, that September slot um, where the fe- season was sort of coming towards yeah. its pinnacle and I get that one of the one of the converse arguments to that is that you build into a grand final, which is an event, and then and then playoffs, where we've talked about I think in our last podcast about the people's uh, unwillingness to part with cash to go to a playoff yeah. to then save themselves to go to a grand final. Well, actually, if you then weigh in a weekend to Newcastle as well in that window, then it becomes a very expensive window, doesn't it, towards the end of the year? So the alternative that has been discussed is we still want an event around about the middle of the season but we don't necessarily want the magic event as it is at the moment um, I, I went to the first T20 I've been to live last week now admittedly it was Yorkshire Lancashire and that has feeling anyway and you know they could play tiddlywinks on the moon mm. at f- four in the morning and somebody would, would take sides um, but it was an encapsulation of three hours and there was a result at the end of it and the thing about magic weekend as well is that if it's just a loop fixture there's no for a neutral there's no buy-in because they go oh right what have I just seen what does that mean you go well we'll tell you in four months time when uh, when we've got the final league positions whether that was a significant game or not and I think um, Darts went through this with their Premier League that they originally had 
you come to one of our events at um, was it 14 or 15 locations yeah, around yeah. the country and you go to an event and you only ever go to one because it's in your city and you go what have I just seen you go well we'll tell you when we get to London in three months time but, but I, in now fairness, to they, the, uh, the darts audience when I went to the <laughs> arena to watch Premier League darts by the by the probably third match of the night we weren't watching much of it. No, but what you do is you get an event that finishes. So you get quarter-final, <laughs> semi-final and a final and somebody's crowned and they get a medal and they get a cup and it still counts as league points. But if you don't go to every week's event, you've seen something. That was the thing about T20 cricket, cricket that yeah. three hours after you got there, you went home and you'd had all your food and the singing and the fireworks and the music as players go on and off and announcers that got very giddy and competitions in the crowd. But somebody had won at the end of it. And maybe that's what's missing from Magic Weekend. <laughs> maybe it is, but then uh, Rugby League is criticised for constantly tinkering with things. And we've had a concept now that's when well, it's a concept was it start, started in 2007 so it's pretty well established as a concept but it hasn't grown beyond the threshold no, has it that's the challenge with it but the NRL has grown what is it in, that in its second year or third year but but it's but that's there's no right result, in a there's no medal at the end no but that's in a heartlands area yeah. isn't it? you're taking it to the absolute seat of uh, passion in Brisbane you know, there, there are now four Queensland teams who are all, you know, relatively access, relatively accessible. It's still a well, long way from People will probably town, drive two hours to get to that stadium. But, but the, that's Australia, isn't it, where people are used to driving distances. And that yeah. two hours in the UK has seemed to be a long way away, isn't it? And I think the other thing about that is we know that we'll talk about all the results and there might have been some surprises and some great performances. But the difference, I think, at the Brisbane one is you genuinely don't know what any of the results are going to be before you get there because their competition is so much tighter. And I think yeah. as a neutral, we, lo we looked at the fixtures and we were probably unfair before it started at this Magic Week and said, oh, Saturday looks interesting. There's something. Sunday might be mm. a harder sell. It may not have actually physically turned out that way because, you know, arguably Warrington and Hull was probably the, the game of the weekend and mm. that was the last game on the Sunday. But you can go to Magic Weekend in Brisbane and go, I'll watch any game because I genuinely don't know who's yeah, going to win. The, the danger for me to go to a, like a nines tournament is we did nines before and it didn't work so we're talking about going back to previous things that have happened yeah. before and they've not been done right so that didn't work for me the previous nines tournament I was part of the officiating team that, that was involved in those is but that we didn't was, do it properly did we? no we didn't do it properly it was midweek it was multiple venues and it were and teams were being put together with a collection of a mixture of players so you weren't your first first team player so if you ended up with a, an isolated tournament you have to ensure that you've got your top line players playing in it I See, think I think there's a way of doing that as well which is something we I think we may have spoken about before and some people will be going not again <laughs> but um, I think if you have 16 teams that are nines and you've got the 12 Super League teams that leaves you a bit of leeway to get some excitement and who the other four are yeah. so you can have your Championship League one select you can have Jamaica if you, you, you know you can have the armed forces whatever, whatever you want to do but I think the advantage of that, first of all, is that every team plays two games on one day and one on the second day. There's an encouragement to stay in the stadium, yeah. and then you can build things around it. So, um, I think the you know the, the obvious thing you can do is, if if it's cash prizes for winners, there's an incentive there to play your best team. But between the semi final and the final, you have rugby league's fastest man, and there's a five thousand pound cash prize. Well, you're not going to put the a team reserve grade winger in the, the, you know Tom Lynham will want to do that probably wouldn't win um, but you you know you, you, you have bands on there because it's easier to keep if you only got 18 minute games the gaps between the games are easier to manipulate yeah. entertainment you, you know you have spot prizes with calling out seat numbers and you win 500 quid well you're going to stay in your seat number aren't you, if you yeah. all, well, I like the idea like you, that. You I, I think to... we've never done it properly yeah but being to a short format of cricket, which is clearly not test cricket. Now, if you want whites and you want people defending, you will not enjoy T20. But if you want to see somebody slog every ball and you want to go home having um, seen 400 runs in three hours, um, there's a new market. The, the other thing that was obvious about the T20 is it wasn't a traditional cricket market. There were some older fans there who clearly supported one of the two counties there were lots of kids Yeah, there weren't lots of kids at Magic no I didn't see many I must admit I, 
I, I, and I'm not saying there would be at nines. No, but I, I, done right, it would work. I think my, my reservation is is whether it will be done done right. Really, I suppose well, you've got to put in the level of investment. To, and that's where you'd hope IMG would come in. This is perhaps where Mark's point comes from. We were sat next to uh, people who travelled up from Kent as well as lo- lots of locals. Uh, there is a spread that got to Magic in its current form. It's great for the fans, but where are the commercials? Where was the where was the hype? Where was the marketing for? I mean, we spoke like the other week about the bash, and no one knew the bash was uh, coming up. But did anyone know Magic was happening? But marketing costs money. Well, we'd rather spend it on a, but a you should, an but, old, old winger or someone than uh, you know, marketing. But rather than just marketing and putting adverts out and all mm. the rest of it, we've got a target audience in Newcastle because we've been there for the World Cup. We've been, we know mm-hmm. people who've bought tickets in and around the Newcastle area. One would hope we know what the statistics were on those who attended in that northeast region. How many then went to the Magic Weekend? But supposedly in years previous, there's been a good number of people that have been going. So. There should be an existing market there that they can tap into, but it's obviously always about growing it. I mean, yeah. one of the other suggestions I had was whether you have, and I don't know whether this was discussed before, whether they have a quarter final of the Challenge Cup mm-hmm. as an event. Yeah, I think the only problem with that is you lose in the quarter final, you don't stay around for the other games. No. Um, and, and that's the danger. And you've got um, eight teams. What's the incentive for the fans of the other teams who've already been knocked out to go? Yeah. I, I just like the idea of a jamboree that, that has. Winner take. See the thing is that it, has it, the, it, that has it, that feel. Magic weekend. It has that feel. Yeah. Of being I mean, a if you're Salford, say, and I'm picking them as, a, as an example because I thought they played really well in the first game and they play a very attractive brand of rugby. Let's just say it's a nines tournament and Salford walk off with some silverware mm. at the end of Sunday evening. There's there's only two other pieces. Well, three if you include the League of the Shield that you can win. Yeah. Why don't we offer? You know, every, everyone says, "Oh, what's happened to the Yorkshire Cup or the Regal Trophy?" And there used to be so many things you could win. Well, if you make it prestigious with a cash prize attached to it, that mm-hmm. has to go to the players, not to the club. I think you're right, and I, I, the sport's increasingly gone to events. Hasn't, it's gone to events, hasn't yeah. it? And that, that's why Magic Weekend, one of the reasons why it was brought in, because it created an event. And I think IMG talked about having peaks and peaks in the season yeah. didn't they and troughs and, and stuff. it's a narrative and it, yeah and it, and it would be a natural peak to a competition I suppose albeit it's a separate competition to the to Super League and then I think if it was something like that a, a festival in the truest sense you would be able to take it to different venues because I think venues would bid for that so whilst the, the, my, my only problem with Newcastle is not that it's a great venue and it's the perfect distance from um, the, the traditional areas, you know, an hour and a half is. Unfortunately, the A one behaved itself. It, you know, it was easier than going on the M62 to Wigan. It's a lovely city. There's a lot to do there. The thing is, we've had Newcastle Thunder there since what 1999, but there's no more people going to watch them. There's, there, you know, no. there, there is a strong and healthy community game there, but even then, I didn't see a huge evidence of it. You know, there wasn't. It was probably there, and it might have been me that missed it. But, you know, the Cramlington Jets orange corner. Mm. I didn't really hear it or see yeah. it this year. There were more Geordie voices at the World Cup game for England and Samoa. But, but you could take an event like that, a nines event that isn't linked to. Um, you know, you could take that to Wales. You could take it to Bristol. It would be just as enjoyable in in you know Brentford. Mm. Um, it doesn't have to be a new. But again, going back to the NRL, the NRL have had the nines, haven't they? And yes. they ran it for a few years and they stopped. So I'd be interested to know why. Time limited, thirteen aside rugby. Twenty minutes each way. Just twenty minutes. Ten minutes each way. Just twenty. Yeah, minutes. I, I think. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of. I'm, I'm throwing out an idea. I'm trying to think of things that. And it's T it, Twenty cricket is still eleven aside cricket. Yeah, I, ju- um, I just think nines gives you the option to have things like if you score a try between the posts, you get five points. You wouldn't want to do that in a thirteen. So, no. You know, if you des- if every team has to designate a player, one of their squad of let's say twelve that are named for a match, but that one player who might wear a different coloured shirt, if he scores, they get six points. It, and it, Sounds yes, like Masters. It's tinkering. <laughs> yeah, no, we had power we play when, 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 the, when the nines were, were when the nines were in last time. We had uh, something called the power play, which had an interesting signal for the referee. It was like <laughs> doing a lasso, <laughs> a lasso with a rope. But I think it was it, it, when a team scored a try, they they had the option to either 
attempt to kick two points with a conversion, or they could run a power play. Oh, a bit like the in American football. So they, they had one game. player to, to score another try, and, and teams who tried invariably didn't score an extra try. But you know, it was like you say, it's another idea that you can you can throw at something. So if we're going to have a nines World Cup, which again is still on the IRL agenda, which mm. you know you would hope that is going to become more regular than the once we've had it. Uh, and again, I think it has some potential for new broadcast partners. Then something has to lead to that. Well, you know, our players have got to play nines domestically. Yeah, because it's completely different to 13. It's com- completely yeah. different. So if the nines World Cup is going to be a thing and in the calendar, a nines event during the season that doesn't have league points attached to it makes a bit more sense, maybe. I who's, don't know. who's the best kicker in the men's game? Goal kicker? Mark Sneed. Mark Sneed. Mark Sneed versus Tara Jane Stanley. In the kicking competition, anything, anything you could have. A, I mean, you go back to uh, rugby union and look yeah. at their, their sevens tournament. It runs as an entire. It's a circuit. separate function yeah. in, in itself, doesn't it? I mean, it's a separate bunch of players that are a part of that uh, tournament, etc. I mean, that that's been long established, but you know, as a product, it's something that you can market mm. independently, isn't it? I think it, it has got legs. It just has to be done right. Merge magic with the Challenge Cup final, says Tim, to make one major weekend over three days on the bank ho- on a bank holiday. Because we usually don't belong on bank holidays, as we know. Uh, day one or two, magic. Oh, day one and two rather. Magic plus academy rails is day three, eighteen ninety five. Women's and men's charge cup finals. Oh well, I don't know where at, but fair enough. Uh, Phil said it was great seeing the uh, PDRL and LDRL getting to play during half time. Players looked to enjoy themselves when they came off the pitch. Moments they won't forget, and that's the inclusivity. Now this is the thing we say all the time. But it happens everywhere. We've but got I think the wheelchair magic this weekend. Yeah, I think with nines time. though, you do have more spaces between games to to have LDRL, mm. PDRL games. Um, you know, exhibition matches. But um, it would need proper. See, the other thing about that, is, and we, we mentioned that, you know, would IMG want that? A, it's a new product, so it falls outside of any existing broadcasting deal. So you can go to a different media partner. If you want, or you can put it, you can put it up to bid. I think the other thing, um, you know, a, a, about all of that is, it, it, it's almost the kind of event that you could give to the Hearns. Well, that's what that, I was thinking. Yeah, that, you know, the Hearns don't want the game. They don't want to deal with teams and owners. But if you say, look, sixty thousand people is our baseline attendance for us to wash our face, and anything above that, you get fifty percent off. Then. You decide the format. You, all the teams will buy into it. All the star players will be made available. If you tell us that it should be nines, if you tell us there should be a cup at the end of it, if you tell us that players have got to sing before the conversion's taken, whatever it might be. Well, I mean, we, 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 speaking of another barrier... Would you not just give it to, to I think, them? I don't know how the cha- the challenge for me is, though, is going back to the players, by the way, is getting the players to buy in and play. Because we saw what happened with mon- the Inc- England-France would- game. Money. Well, it has to, money has to money has to speak. All. Money has to speak, but not just that, but to participate. So it can't just be all on. I think the, the other winning, thing, but... talking to players, is they want to play in venues like that because mm. a lot of them will not get the opportunity to turn up in a bus, to change in the change room of that quality, to run out into a stadium that that's mm. good. Um, you know, so I think they do buy into the concept. It's just whether we change the concept to make it even more meaningful mm. for and And I don't know if what we're talking oh. about is the answer, but I think we're falling between we need an event, but it might not be it, magic as it currently exists. It certainly came across on TV for the teams who won, celebrating with their fans, their fans themselves, that it was more than two points to one, even though it was just two points they'd won. So they, there's something there. Mm. But, I mean, Barry McDermott offered the telly this morning because I managed to switch on Sky Sports News at the right time said two things that I remember. One, getting to the local schools and give out tickets to them, which made complete sense because, you know, they're there. If they turn up, they turn up. If they don't, they don't. It's not like you're oversubscribing tickets like gladiators. Um, and put a band on on the Saturday night, which I think mm-hmm. is not something that's an original thought or anything, but we haven't done it. What, what do we do on the Saturday night? Do they sell the media drinks somewhere? You know, there were, there were media, media drinks. But, but for those that were getting back, we couldn't avail ourselves so you, you, of the hospitality. I mean, it's good that they put on Wakefield Lee on the Sunday morning, then, wasn't it, for all the people who turn up drunk the next day? But I think, again, we talked, we talked the other week, didn't we, about the Manchester City uh, Stadium and the plans to mm. extend that and having that fan zone. That would be perfect for something like that, under that covered, that covered space between the sort of hotel and the back of that uh, extended uh, stand, to have a band, to have a... 
an evening of uh, sort of entertainment and, and and that sort of stuff for the food fans where drink. where they would yeah. gather food and drink. Yeah, it would be it would be great actually. That so we know there's plenty of people who go to the music after racing that are not interested in the racing whatsoever. They're just there to see whichever band they're on. So we know people will pay twenty quid to go. If, if people are paying 20 quid for the Magic Weekend just to see the band afterwards, that's 20 quid we've got that we wouldn't have got anyway. So You pay 20 quid to go watch all six mm -hmm. games, I yeah. think. I mean, it's incredible value. Is the stadium too big, says Chris? He says, uh, the size of the stadium, to uh, it, 40, big perhaps to a 40,000 stadium capacity, uh, closer to make it closer to capacity to look better. If I could read that, Chris, it was made more sense. And yes, in an ideal world, it, it, perfectly. It, I couldn't read it. it. In an ideal world, it would be that, but... But you then limit your choice anyway. all yeah, the time, yeah. don't you? And the, yeah. the fact it's St James's Park, it's a fabulous stadium. It is. People aren't going to stay. The majority of people are not going to stay there to watch all three games on both days. They, they're going to stay and watch their team, and they might stay and watch a bit of the game before and a bit after. But yeah. they're going to drift in and out. But where do you go? I mean, you can't go to Elland Road because I think that, for everything we said about Newcastle United staff may not apply to. Is, that is it watch there. about fifty three thousand fifty four at something, Newcastle? Something like I that. I think you aspire to fill that. That, that yeah. you, you find it. You know. If you keep going down in size, you're, you're limiting yeah. appeal. I think what you want to do is get to the point where it's the hottest ticket in town. In in Brisbane, it's sold out. Mm. If you haven't got your ticket early enough, you don't go. But it sold out this year, didn't it? So which means automatically people are thinking next year, mm. right, we need yeah. to get our tickets. Yeah. Uh, so it will be pre-sales then. So I think 53,000 is about right if we're serious about putting on an event. But... Could you have in Nottingham says Matt? Yeah, well, Matt, Nottingham was one of those places we said before for things like this or an England international certainly rather than Warrington the thing about Nottingham but. is you've actually got two venues you know, if, if you wanted to have County and Forest they're, they're within walking distance mm. of each other but, you know, and the, the, the city is renowned for being a, a destination entertainment area but I think the danger is though this conversation it ends up talking about which stadia, what how big, yeah, exactly. what's the form the, to me the, whatever the format is whether that's sticking with it as it is Whatever it is, it just has to be done right. Proper money has to be yeah. invested in it yeah. to get the buy-in. You have to get the buy-in of the players and the clubs. You have to get everybody on board behind it. And certainly the magic as it exists seems to be supported by the clubs because they're the ones that are lobbying AMG, as far as I understand, to keep it going it, forward. It's also supported by the broadcaster because it's their cheapest weekend. You know, They well, set I'm their sure cameras up yeah. for one game and get six. Yeah. Um, and yeah. whilst there's a bit of that on-cost for... They need more people because they're covering more games. Actually, for them, it, it's really cheap. The, the other encouraging thing, I think, for reading between the lines of what Rodri Jones said wasn't that we haven't made a decision on Magic. It's that it's all contingent on mm. the television deal, which hopefully will be announced by the end of this month. But he did say, without mentioning who, that there were numerous parties interested, which, again, if you can keep putting value into the sport... Yeah, but if I was, it's if I was, if I was, is it Ali? Well, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, it's no, it does. It's what it's what you're but, yeah, you, you would know, say that. If I was, a, you, you know, in my, with my property hat on, if I'm selling something on behalf of the client, I would be saying to people that I've got people queuing up to, to you know, to put an offer in or whatever. But you're playing you're a dangerous being, game if that isn't true. Mm, but. True, but. The, the, the reality is, they will be having conversations with more than one broadcast partner mm -hmm. because they'll be having conversations with Viaplay and Sky. So you've two I'm there, not sure and, about that. and the BBC. I think they just got rid of their CEO this one. Okay, <laughs> but, but, but no, you there's would, at you, least be BBC be going, and, and Channel Four BT and Sky. And so there's three there. There's well, possibly yeah. four with this, Viaplay. The, new, so. the brand new rebranded BT as TNT Sports. So we've taken Eurosport. But I think they would have win. a view on what the event looked like and when they would want it. So again, you're not going to announce now. We're going back in 2024 at the same time to the same venue. You need to conclude that TV deal. Mm. And part of that should be, we've got an event which is going to be relatively cheap for you to produce, but you're going to buy 66 matches, but six of them you're going to get in the same venue. Yeah, I mean, I, I suspect in the short term, Magic will stay, but long term it may not. Because I, I think they wanted to get rid of loot fixtures, didn't they, AMG? Mm. And I suspect that probably won't happen. Things so, seem to be happening slower than they yeah. probably have, perhaps thought they would so. to keep asking the club well the, and, the, and, the, and the TV deal's not happened probably as no. early as they thought it would which pushes things, decisions back doesn't it it makes it difficult to make decisions on next year it means you do you keep things as they were for another year to allow you more time to, to, to provided you can get that TV deal exactly because that's so. going to yeah it's so I just think I think it will stay next year I think they'll have to find a, a slot in the calendar and whether they look to then rehash 
the format for the year after a nines tournament or whatever or try and get rid of loot fixtures in that subsequent year who knows but uh, I mean loot fixtures for me have to go Mm. but then the clubs would then have to say well hang on a minute we've lost this revenue so where does that come from does it come from an enhanced TV package well I think we probably know that that's not going to be the case or does it come from marketing your own home games that are remaining better because none of you are selling out your stadium hopefully yeah and we'll we'll give you a competition that or you will get a competition where the teams are more even before it kicks off so there's more uncertainty of outcome Mm. Um, because the other thing I suppose this week has been a few salary cap changes and the idea I think again that Robert Hicks was talking about when he did his briefing was this salary cap floor might be coming in Mm. so it's all very well having a third marquee player if you can't afford them that that (laughs) helps the teams that might have owners with more largesse but what, what would be really interesting is if you can bring in the salary cap floor which means if you don't hit that then that's another mark against you in being in Super League you're pushing up the standard rather than bringing it down yeah that was part of IMG's plan wasn't it to drive the standard up as opposed to sort of reform going back to the yeah. lowest common denominator really and it, that has to be the case we'll talk about the lowest common denominator in a bit uh, what they've got zero, yeah, exactly they've got zero points but so we, we, we're all in favour of some kind of magic event or thing staying in the calendar we don't know what it can be or what it will be or when or where because we don't know what's going to happen next year but if, if people are walking with their feet to Newcastle you know not quite record numbers but the biggest crowd since last year or whatever uh, they certainly weren't heading to York the week before for the summer bash in everything we said presciently the week before when we were on and that is an event that can be scrapped and no one would miss it would they I think the problem it with is current, the problem with the is. bash is that if you're talking of leap, loop fixtures that's the only one so that does have more of an impact on your season depending on who you play um, so I think that that's one thing that in, in terms of uh, purely the, the rugby reasons to have it doesn't make a lot of sense and it, it never really has the venue only worked when it was going away for a holiday where we all put our arms around each other and put our kiss me quick hats on and enjoyed the season if you take you it and to, Richard did I didn't. well you would we had cake <laughs> in the press room um, but you know if you're going to yeah. take it to the venue of a team that plays in that competition however good that venue is it doesn't work it's, it's not good. No the bash has gone. It's, for me, it's just that what happened that's gone for me. And I think yeah. it's almost it was I was almost like setting it up re- in readiness for the fail that um, by putting it in York on on a weekend when you've got racing on a, at York race course. Um, it just it, to me, it's just not gonna it's just not gonna happen. There's no buy in there for the for the, for the from the fans really in sufficient number for it to continue. And as you rightly say, with one. As it being one standalone additional fixture on top of a home and away, it automatically skews the competition. And and ultimately, why are you doing it? It doesn't have the same reasons that you have a magic weekend for me around raising the profile of the sport. It was a, it was probably a, um, uh, what's the what's the right phrase? It was a, it was something sort of given to the championship clubs in a mm-hmm. way in a response to the birth of the magic weekend. As this is your equivalent, but. If that's a loss leader as well, you can't have two loss leaders, can you? No, I think the, the, the other thing as well is that there's no buying for the players because Blackpool was a little bit, you know, an event, wasn't it? We talk about what, what does it mean to the fans? They can have a great weekend. It's, it's a place where you probably would look to, to stay over. Great for the players because it, you know, it has that feel. We used to have the, the Northern Rail Cup final there that it was a little bit special and different. It isn't if you go to York. I think that via the fact that via play only wanted to feature two of the six that. games yeah. tells you even in their schedule they were going. I'm not really bothered. Well, they had a busy schedule, didn't they? You know, and so you know, when, when they're the only speed well, they're the only people that are broadcasting championship, and even they didn't want to broadcast all all six, even though the cameras would be there. Mm-hmm. So they only set up on one day. So no, I, I think, think that speaks volumes, doesn't it? Yeah, I can't see that happening. Mass asked if Doncaster's ground's too small for magic. Yes, yes. I think it's. Hilariously, when Wakefield got to the semi final of the Challenge Cup in 2008, those uh, halcyon days when I was still working on commercial radio. In fact, my picture on Twitter is from that game when Wakefield played whole. Lots of uh, Wakefield fans were moaning they wouldn't be able to get tickets, and of course it didn't sell out. No, so, uh, I touched just that game, it was good. No, it wasn't. Matt well, Pe- not for a Wakefield no. <laughs> Matt, Matt Peterson. Now, he, he's a winger. Oh my word! He, he had hair. He puts Tom Lynham in the shade. Um, I feel like we're picking on Tom Lynham, but oh well. 
Uh, like the World Cup, run all together. Women's, men's, wheelchair and a massive success. So, man can bash together, says Kevin. I think the only problem is, is the if thing, you put them all the together... The thing about the Etihad is you could, yes. because you could have that smaller stadium for the bash and the biggest stadium for Magic, but it would have to be over oh, three days. And there's no bash on telly at that point. You'd have it? to be over three days. Minimum. How many games do people want to watch? Even the most diehard of fans. Um, and you can't... How do you run did you wheelchair? Do all, did you do all three when... On Saturday, and you were in, watched all three. You, I hardly watched any of the rugby. You were just at the bar, weren't you? <laughs> well, I was just it wasn't at the bar because I wasn't drinking because I was driving. But I was just talking to people. It was great to catch up with people, and I really enjoyed the day actually. But the rugby, as I always used to say, almost spoiled a good weekend. Uh, I always used to say that when I used to go away on a rugby trip. No, it, no, it didn't actually. The most, the most of of the activity I watched or the rugby I watched was probably the last game actually, and the second half of that. But. Um, but that's what it's about it's not necessarily about just the action on the field that no. we keep going back to that it's an event so at an event you can go to the van, fan zone you can go out and come back in because you go for a meal or go for a drink or you want to watch a bit of that game until the score blows out and then you go back outside the stadium and you catch up with friends or whatever it's, you don't just sit there and watch all three back to back unless you're, unless you're a complete die hard I thought you were going to use a different word <laughs> Um, Which of course applies to the media who have to watch all yeah. three again. No, no, no. And I probably would have done, but it, it, actually, um, what you realise when you're in such a big venue, you're a little bit remote from the a- action on the field, aren't you? Where, where I was sitting anyway, you're sort of halfway up the stand. You, when you're used to sort of being in a smaller stadium, um, you're a little bit closer and you sort of feel the action a bit more. But yeah, I, as, as I say, I, I enjoyed the event and I enjoyed the magic week, and I always enjoyed it as a, as a match official, to be honest. Where's, where's the bucket hat thing come from? Why, why is everyone wearing bucket hats all of a sudden? I didn't know they were. Yeah, I mean, they were at the FA Cup final. All the Man United fans were wearing them. We didn't do them any bloody good, did it? 13 seconds in. And now uh, Danica off of the telly. She's, I saw her. She, she, did you? Well, mm. she, now she'll be, next time you see her, she'll be resplendent in a Lee Leopard's bucket hat because she's managed to blag one. She didn't learn that from us. What have we ever got from this programme? Hmm. I've got some programme. Um, <laughs> who was worse says Kevin Tom Tom Lynham or Minikin well, I, think, I, I wasn't bothered what Greg Minikin did so. Thomas Lynham as the Wakefield Trinity Twitter feed called him which I thought was amusing um, if you can't score against 11 men um, ah, yes well done Lee I don't, I, I don't think there's anything to say about that game I just think it's sums up Wakefield season so far if if I mean, the image... professional players can't create opportunities. But wasn't it James Ford's fault anyway? They weren't scoring points. Well, but James Ford went yeah. a few weeks ago now. So. Oh, it's Tom Lyndon's fault now. <laughs> I, <laughs> think, I think the image of the game for Wakefield fans will be Mason Lee now sending his own player off for yeah, HIA that, that by kicking the ball it? into his well head. Done. I didn't watch that game, but uh, it sounds <laughs> well like I didn't miss much. <laughs> I don't think David Fafita is the answer, says Gary Schofield in his column today. It depends Entitled what the question is. Trinity's desperate measures. Well, there's a big picture of them. They've got his pink pants back. So is, it, uh, is it changing hairstyles? I find that a strange... Uh, I find it a strange signing, to be honest. Um, Do you want my honest opinion or my diplomatic opinion? I don't know I don't know if that's more a play to the fans than to the team. Yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's what I think that's, it, because, that's all that is. Because my think impression of the disrespectful team... disrespectful to the players. Well, my impression of the team is that I think he, at times, upset his own team. With his own behaviours and his own standards, um, so I, I, that's why I think is it more of a play to the fans that we are doing something? We're trying to bring back an old fans' favourite. Was he a fans' favourite? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, well, was. two elements of the fan base that people saying he's people saying he's made a sacrifice to come over. Come on, grow up. He's getting paid to be a professional rugby league player. If he wasn't getting paid enough, he could stay at home and do whatever he's doing. He'll probably home. be being paid more than playing for the yeah, entrance or whoever he was playing you know, for. It's nonsense to call him a servant or this or that or the other. But um, you've got to ask, why was he dispensed with in the first place? And why suddenly is he going to be the answer bringing well, back not, is he? halfway because through the season? Don't it need may, a, it they may, need halfbacks. They need well, people and it may be create. that Luke Gale makes his debut on... Sunday in the combination of Luke Gale and David Fita beats Leeds, in which which will please the Wakefield fan base. But they have signed five players, didn't they? Two of whom were their own juniors that they were they bringing back of, yeah. and that they were paying anyway. So why are suddenly they the answer? And we do wish Jack Croft well because he was carried off. David Fafita, who was one of, who was very expensive, and two Frenchmen who didn't appear in the squad this week. One of whom 
I don't even think has been registered for Catalan Dragons, uh, even though he supposedly was in in there. I, I don't know how that is anything other than panic. And the worst thing for Wakefield wasn't the way they played against Lee, it was the fact that Castleford picked up two points. Yeah, but London have signed Corey Norman. Yeah, and and signed Dean Farrer. Dean Farrer. Who so actually, I think, is a great centre. Those two signings would, would, would walk into the Wakefield team, I would have thought. Well, the so other what thing, are they paying them? I mean, David Hughes has got <laughs> money in his pocket, hasn't he? <laughs> For a team that aren't going to get promoted. Well, the, the other thing, although they had a good win against Wood. They did. The, the other, just, they've got a new coach as well. The other thing about Wid- uh, about um, Wakefield is that they've got to deregister somebody to bring Fafita in, which they haven't publicly announced. So again, there's an overseas player who now knows his oh, surplus to requirement, register, yeah. which again doesn't foster, you know, unless it's an overseas player that they want to get rid of, that the other players don't like, that the the coach has said he doesn't figure in my plans. That's fine, but it's very hard to bring a guy in and debut and not tell you who the guy is who's got to go out to accommodate him and I know Tangano has broken his arm and so he might not play mm. for another um, couple of months and I know that he's coveted by some other clubs if he becomes available but again one of the things you have to do when you sign for Fita is say who you're getting rid of or mm. it's, I, it's the word in Scotty is desperate I just don't it just doesn't make any sense other than that you're playing to a certain element of fans who worship him as if he was the second coming, but he's just a prop forward. Yes, he's got passion, but passion's a completely overrated concept in professional sport because they should all be trying out there. They're not getting paid to do a job. If they're not trying out there, then they're failing and they should be sent. He managed to get Ben Reynolds sent off. That was good. If you know, if you gene up the crowd and dancing on goalposts or whatever, that's not your job. Your job's to win rugby league games and wait for didn't win many rugby league games with him last year and they ain't winning any games with him this year and they'll probably win 40 nil on Sunday and he'll be the man of the match yeah I mean Tom Lyndham had a good but game neither you, or, the neither you or I'll be allowed in the ground no no I don't know who to email to, to <laughs> let us in but it's it, it just smacks of I <laughs> but you would have thought in the past if, if the club would have had offers for him that, <laughs> that they would have been wise to have taken them which they did and they should have taken them but then again, I would question who who authorised the signing of Tom Lineman. I know this sounds like we're picking on him, but he's going to be a well-paid player to be on the wing, and he's not good enough. And and I don't know, that's not his fault he's not good enough. That's the fault of whoever signed him. Although I've got a feeling that person may not be at the club anymore. <laughs> but he went to Featherstone last year and pulled up zero trees, and he comes back. But he gets a free pass from some because he does funny interviews in the media. So, oh, look, Tom Lyon, maybe he's saying something funny. But if, you, if, if the panic button was pressed before the weekend, what button are they pressing now after Castle can beat Leeds? Self-destruct, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, but here's the other thing. Um, fans will say, get rid of Mark Applegarth, but he's not the problem either, no. is he? Because he, I, who's going to come in and coach them? Wayne I've Bennett. got every sympathy for what he's been trying to do and the position that he's been placed, which I know he took on mm. in, in good faith. Of course. Uh, as, you, as you would. I, I, I think it said something about the lack of confidence and organisation that when they were 13 men on 11, the only chance they fashioned, Lynham dropped the ball over the line. But even for an hour of that game, they had a man mm. advantage. I don't remember Wakefield making an overlap but surely, throughout that entire... Surely in training, you, you practice playing against 12 because how many yellow cards do we get in, <laughs> you know, on average in a game? So the, there will be typically in I don't know every second game or whatever the chances are you're going to play at least mm-hmm. 10 minutes probably against 12 men so you would expect them to, to practice that so you can create your overlap or whatever in, in a little bit in an easier way get, you get your grubber kick in through that gap that wasn't or shouldn't have been there or whatever you know attacking the side where there's a defender line oh. the, the other thing that I think gets forgotten in all of that because everything you said is valid is that that was a hell of a performance from Lee. They're very good, aren't down they? to very good. 11 and then 12 men for the bulk of the game to be so dominant. They were created. I, I was watching that game thinking, who has got the extra player here? Mm. Uh, and and how Ricky Lutelli wasn't on the choice of potential man of the match because he was the man of the match. For, I, I thought it was absolute. Every time he got the ball, he, he threw absolute fear into the Wakefield defence. And because of that, and the way he played, and clearly Lachlan Lamb took the eye, and he's a great player. Um, but I thought Lutelli absolutely terrorised Wakefield out wide, and gave the impression that it was Lee that had the extra man, and, and not 
I'm convinced they get Trinity. to Wembley. I'm convinced they get to the Challenge Cup because whoever, you know, I'm not saying they've got a walk over against York, but you'd expect them to beat York on current form and last year's form. But whoever they're getting in the semi final, they ain't going to want to play Lee in a one off game with the way they've played this season. Well, they fourth in the table now. Um, yeah, just, could have gone to Yeah, just behind Wigan on points difference and only three points between them. So they could have done with Catalan scoring some more points on Saturday. And or two if, points if, points if your boys hadn't got over the line, exactly. they would have gone to Go on, Max Jowett. Beating but, Wigan. Uh, yeah. beaten, sorry, beaten St. Helens this year, beaten Warrington this year. Beaten Leeds. Not that that counts yeah. for much this right. year. But We've got one of those seasons where there's nothing wrong with a season where a St. Helens goes and runs away with it because they're an outstanding team. But we've got a lot of teams who are in contention here. It's that, as you say, uh, uncertainty of outcome. We could have any one of seven teams getting to Old Trafford at the minute. And you can't necessarily rule out Leeds or Hull if they go on a run. I'm going to rule out Huddersfield. Huddersfield's an interesting one because well, their game in hand is against St Helens, but that was a <laughs> dire performance. I mean, again, Saints were good. Second half played the way that we've seen Saints play. So, they've scored a couple of absolutely glorious tries, yeah. but that that again is is a head scratcher that um, we're halfway through the season and we're looking at Huddersfield going, yeah, they're not they're not likely to make the, the playoffs. They may well go on and do it, but there's clearly some issues of selection there in terms of too many square pegs in round holes I, mean, I, I don't want to pick on Jake Connor and, and he may you know Ian Watson has said um, a major name will be dropped for next week but it was Connor's defence that kept being exploited on uh, on Sunday afternoon uh, it, it wasn't his getting his hands on the ball and creating problems Saints ran at him where he was defending all the time and, and clearly exposed him Shrewd coaching by Paul Wellens to get his team to do that. Saints are back, and now um, they never went away. No, and this is the thing I've, I've been saying it for weeks. If you had a grand final between Warrington and St Helens, who would you back? You'd back St Helens, and 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 I'm not saying Warrington aren't going to go on and win the Super League, but course and distance St Helens, they've always got that in their back pocket for the time being. And what is going on with Huddersfield? We, we're trying to we've answered we're trying to ask this question every week. It seems now we know what's happening at Wakefield. They're, they're done. They're gone. Right, that's it. Huddersfield and Castleford are glad that Wakefield exists because otherwise they would be in bother this year. And we'll talk about Cass in a bit. But where did Huddersfield go? There's nothing for them to play for at all. They're not going to make the top six, he says. <laughs> as, they got, as they're going to win six, by 100 points table, at you, Warrington. You've got to have 16 points at the moment to get in that top six, aren't they? So they're, they're three wins behind at this stage of the season at, what, halfway through the year, are we? Mm. Thereabouts. So it's some ground to make a cup, isn't it? But it's not impossible... Um, but they're going to have to have a sharp turnaround in 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 form. Um, well, I mean, they, they, I don't know. I didn't see the Castleford game the week before. Obviously, they, they beat Castleford, didn't they? Uh, I don't imagine it was the most convincing performance. And who do they play this week? Warrington away, who of uh, course need to, um, yeah, <laughs> bounce back again <laughs> themselves. So I, I don't know. I think I think it's, it's worrying. If you're a Huddersfield fan, I think it's worrying for for the club. I think the thing about Wakefield is you knew from the assembly of the players and the spend on the salary cap mm. that they probably weren't going to be making the six, that survival was going to be their aim. You looked at Huddersfield's recruitment and all the previews that we did sort of in January, February time, and we went, well, all the pieces that Ian Watson would want, he's, he's got them now. They're, they're, and I know they've had some injuries in key positions, and I know he's talking about bringing Ollie Russell back this week. Every team has had to cope with some injuries. Mm. The squad they had was bigger and deeper and they got to the cup final last year and were five get, five minutes away from winning that you thought that that's a platform to build on and here we are halfway through the following season and whilst we all said where does Jake Connor fit in they actually do seem to have gone backwards further than anybody else and I don't know how you stop that because Theo Farge is back and I thought again uh, anything good came from him um, Tui Lola here isn't the best full back in the competition that he was being bulled up to be last year I don't know why. Um, I, I'm not sure waiting for Ollie Russell to come back, who is a good half back, but again wasn't a first choice when everybody was fit, is now going to be the answer. Um, there are some very experienced players that, like Nathan Peets, Chris McQueen last year, obviously was one of the top players, that they're just not playing at that perform. level. They're just not performing. I mean, you've got Jake Connor, he's going to the NRL, isn't he, next year? I, I'd be very surprised if a jet, any NRL was, club was interested. But he's only signed at Huddersfield for one year, hasn't he? I think it was more Hull could see that they didn't want okay. to than. It's uh, Will Price is going to the will, NRL. Will's isn't going. It? Yeah. But, but, but they're not picking Will, anyway. No, no, that's. 
<laughs> that's what I mean. And then you've got Farge, who's back now in the house, which would, would have been one reasons, one of the reasons perhaps why. But as you rightly said, they they got deliberately a bigger squad, and not a squad of arguably fringe players. They got mm-hmm. experienced players and, and like quality Lee, players. Lee bought an it's experienced just not squad of mm. players, and they're playing a way whereby so, they're, they're getting the best out of those. Which means next year will be a test for Lee, but we're not bothered about next year now because they're having a good year this yeah. year. And, and for I me, think, and, and, and look, I, the, the coach hasn't changed. We talked about, about other clubs where coaches have changed and it takes a while to turn things around. Clearly, the coach hasn't changed. One would imagine the way he coaches hasn't changed either, but something's not clicking. And, and you, from the outside looking in, you can only imagine it's a combination of the way that the players are interacting with A, each other, or B, the coach, to me. Because the messages that are being delivered are not being seen in action on the field, are they? I think the margin of the defeat, as well as St Helens played, would be a concern if you were Huddersfield. Because if you, you know, at the start of the season it was, oh, we've lost uh, three or four games by very narrow margins and our points differences. Yeah, you know, that that was a bit of a thrashing. And teams do get thrashed at Magic mm. Weekend. We saw, um, was it Hull Saints when? Um, Justin Holbrook took over and Saints were in a terrible run of form and Hull were up and, and Saints were from like 50 odd nil or something. Yeah. it can happen yeah. and it, it doesn't necessarily define your season mm. but I just think at the moment I don't see where Huddersfield go No, no that's the danger with we talked before about Lee picking up points early in the season just in case well actually that that just in case has gone for <laughs> just in case they might get in the top four Yeah, not just in case they stay up and I never thought they would be in danger to be honest with the, with the team that they had but the fact that Huddersfield did lose those games by a few points here and there, has that actually had a psychological impact on the on the squad? Because I suspect it, m- it must have done because it's added pressure. Because each time you you don't win, it's a little bit well, like Hull KR actually. Hull KR have now gone three on the bounce, having lost. I, Although having said that, they played very well. Yeah, I think it's expectation. I think that there isn't a weight of expectation on Lee. Everything they're doing is yeah, bonus. Great. There isn't a weight of expectation yet on Hull KR because they're still on that upward curve. There was a huge weight of expectation on Huddersfield before a ball was kicked. There were people saying, I think they'll make the grand final. I think if there's going to be a new name on the trophy, it'll be Huddersfield. It didn't go their way in some of the early rounds. And it's almost like the whole confidence has caved in on themselves. It is, but I, and again, I, it's my I don't know how you point. change that. It's about the top six inch, isn't it? Yeah, and that's what professional sport largely is. That, that what separates the good and the bad is not not often, uh, well, not always level of skill. Um, I mean, look where look where St Helens is in the table. They're mid table. They're outside. Oh, just in the top six, aren't they? The sixth, but they've got arguably the best team in the competition for the last four years. Well, not arguably. They they are the best team in the, in the last four years. But and I think they know what their settled first 17 is. If everybody's But there's, fit, re- there's reasons at St Helens why they've not yeah. got the wins. And now people pointed about the World Club Challenge and other reasons. But some of that, to me, is to do with your mindset. And so you have to manage a pre- the pressure, does, don't you? And, and, and the, you go back to the phrase of pressure's a privilege. I'm just not sure that Ian Watson knows what his best team is. And, it doesn't, and does halfway it, I don't through think. the season, that that's a that would be a worry. But so well, well, three years ago. well done, Saints. I thought they played some lovely rugby. Louis Scott, he did. Your first mate, did you first enjoy try of the season. Yeah. Yes, I did. I did, and no doubt he'll be mentioning it in his column this week. So, yeah. who who should be wearing the uh, number two shirt for England come the series against Tonga? Should it be Tommy Makinson of four tries, a record points haul in the Magic Weekend, a construct we've just invented because uh, we love stats like that or Tom Johnston off of Germany uh, who scored a hat-trick for the Catalans Dragons wow that's Quite a, are you assuming that Dom Young is on the other one rather than having both well I don't know they're both on the same wing don't they I think so that, that was more, but I don't, I don't think it might I, 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 I think Johnston's one of the great stories of the season um, which is nothing to do with He's left Wakefield at the right time. It's just that, <laughs> but, but, but it's perfect but it is. But you know, everything he's been through, well, the injuries top. he's had, the, um, the the return to form has been exceptional. Mm. To be topping the try scoring mm. charts halfway through the season, to be scoring the kind of tries that he got his reputation for, and then you're worried that every time he leapt into the corner at Bellevue, he was going to be helped off with some kind. Yeah, you know, he looks in magnificent form, and I I think he'd, I'd I'd love to see him play for England. It will be a uh, a, a just dessert for the for the hard work he's been through. He's clearly revelling 
the, uh, the the Perpignan Sun. But that's what the national team needs, isn't it? It needs yeah. that competition for places, and yeah. that's what it's got certainly in that in in that position. No, he's br- he's brilliant. He's a joy to watch. He's a wonderful hat trick. Well, as Alan's pointed out, Catalans won't be far away at the end of the season, and they are topping the table right now, forty six twenty two over Wigan. That was a comprehensive thrashing. Is probably the wrong word, but a comprehensive victory. The there, there was a was it a thirteen minute spell in the first half when they scored four tries almost back to back to back to back. Well, I, they I, were irresistible. I missed that first half because it was in the bar. <laughs> when I came out, I couldn't. Like believe, I'm going back, isn't it? I couldn't believe oh. the score. Or was it thirty points to eight when I walked but, out? I was like, wow. I don't think any would have anyone would predict no. that. Not even the Catalan players would have predicted no. that. Not a chance. But again, they've got a big squad when they're fit, and they everybody knows their job, and they looked. They looked so well drilled. Um, conversely, that that again would be a, a slight worry for Wigan because is that three Super League losses in four and two of them by forty points? And they only just, just scraped home against OKR. Okay, ah. That's again, you know, it's a it's a mid season um, dip. Um, but there's again, not many consistent teams though in the competition, is there? No, it's the manner of the Let's defeat. Because I think Wigan scored a couple of late tries. Otherwise, it would have looked. Worse we only need than to go was. back what three weeks or something like that to Catalan. They were in the middle of a maybe a run of yep. three or four games without a win, which Warrington are now sort of almost in. Yeah, and teams are going to do that. Well, Hull is the classic example. You know, whoever you support, you look at those seven games that they lost when everybody was saying the season is over. It's abject. We're losing by sixty points at home and. We lost the derby by fourteen. Hull now were a, were a joy in that game yeah. against against Warrington. Slightly um, different the whole situation for me because they that was going to happen. They were at anyway. rock, absolute yeah. rock bottom, yeah. And, and then Tony they, Smith, they had to the Tony yeah. Smith effect. He was going to change. It. He had to change it, and they're on an upward trend. But my general point is that teams tend to ebb and flow as yes. the season goes along, and they can do that because of the nature of the the competition structure because it's a playoff structure. At the but end. it'd be really interesting to see how Matty Pete Copes with that, you know what team changes he makes, what whether he sticks by the principles that he's got. Jai Field is back. Clearly, I don't think he was fully fit, um, so it was a bit of a risk to play him. But but that immediately gave them an extra outlet, and and yet it just didn't work. So it will be interesting. Um, mm. And they played St Helens this week. Yeah, I was going to say the interesting thing mm. is that's the game arguably that they performed their best this year in the, the, the Good Friday yeah. derby. Be very interesting coming off a couple of hefty defeats how they then go to Saints who will have that element of revenge in their mind um, yeah and off and the back sit, of a great performance and sit, home, yeah um, it's a, it's another tough test for yeah, them I think it's a big a, a big game for Wigan really like that Salford Hulk now first game of the weekend the biggest Everyone's crowd filtering into the biggest stadium. crowd for a first game at Magic Weekend yeah I saw that and I thought well it's probably not surprising because invariably they put Catalan on <laughs> yeah or to lose yeah. yeah to lose Toronto yeah. um, good game enjoyable game a lot of good rugby yeah, I didn't think it was as good I thought that would have been a really interesting I didn't think it was as entertaining as, as I hoped it might have been Hulk Howe made too many mistakes yeah it was a, it was a bit stop start and I appreciate there was an injury a long injury in there yeah. as well wasn't there it was a little bit too stop start for me but um, but Jordan Abdul will be back either next week or the week after and I think yeah. that will make a difference so that Jez Litton is, is a great auxiliary hooker but I'm not sure he's a halfback yeah. Matt Parcell was, was great but I think Matt Parcell being spelled a little bit is, is even more dangerous yeah. um, no, I, th- I think um, we, we, should, we should underestimate Salford at our peril um, I, I think they are a team again the, the two meet each other what in a fortnight in the Challenge, in the Challenge Cup that's yeah. going to be a great game uh, because one or other of those could go to Wembley I agree and that's why I said to you and I ended up not being selected by the BBC I, I would have I think if I'd have been the BBC I'd have selected the whole KR Salford game because I've, I don't know I mean having said that obviously the way Hull are playing at the moment it's, they're, both, they're, they're both interesting ties those but yeah they, they, you'd fancy that you'd fancy the chances of either of those sides getting to Wembley given that you only need to win that fixture and you're in the semi-final and then you're 80 minutes away but yeah I just think Ryan briley has been reinvented this year he, he's such a danger um, he's playing with so, a level of confidence isn't well, he well twice he linked and cre- created brilliant tries um, mm. and that I don't think that's an element that Salford have had um, I think we know how good their halfbacks are at controlling the game I, I still think Brody Croft is uh, one of the best players you know Jake Clifford is now coming into the kind of form um, that will be 
parallel with what Brodie Croft did last year at, at Salford. Croft is a joy to watch mm. as, as a creative halfback, and he can do that because Sneed is the ultimate organizer and kicker. Um, so that that's a, a wonderful combination, and I, I do like watching Salford play. Andy Ackers didn't play, and obviously he gives them a different dimension mm. as well. So mm. uh, it, it, it was a, it was a good way to open the um, the proceedings, I thought, because mm. they both played the right way, and in in the sun it was it was a good. Uh, it was good opener. With Salford away at Castleford this week, they uh, fancy there's chances of getting another game, a win there, won't they? But uh, Hokiara away at Catalan. Well, I understand that the pre match uh, entertainment at, at the uh, Menderhurst Jungle on when, when's that? On Friday night is uh, the Castleford players who aren't playing carrying around two points that they got from the victory over Leeds because it's their grand final, of course. <laughs> um, oh, it's a bit harsh, isn't it? But, you know, we're going down. I can say whatever I want, it doesn't matter. Um, Leeds wait once I want Leeds to win Phil and they let me down you know, I think Leeds, you know I think Leeds' problem is they've started winning first halves haven't they <laughs> yeah. you're going wrong now yeah. Yeah. you're wrong way around yeah. won the last three first yeah. halves they've got they, need to, they need to stop scoring in the first half and just save it for the second or maybe have a man sent off or yeah. Yeah. But they've gone from being you're not going to know what they're going to do from one game to the next to you don't really know what they're going to do from one half to the next yeah. to now not knowing what they're going to do within a half yeah. But is this unstructured rugby is this one is I, I think part of it is uh, and it's yeah, it's an excuse you take seven players out <laughs> yeah, and, you, and you lose arguably their form forward in the warm up which which res- yeah. means you've got to put a back on the bench and restricts your, your in- you know Tyndall didn't come on until a minute from time um, so you, you're basically playing with, with one less on your bench yeah. that is disruptive think- so as well as Castleford play to win it 10 down with 10 minutes to go too many people yeah. playing out of position and not enough quality on the field and, and Andy last said it they knew in all the build up that that was the perfect chance to, to beat a team that was going through some adversity so yeah. yeah I was sort of walking out with it well not walking out with them but I'll, it was the last game of the day wasn't it so obviously people were streaming out the stadium and the Leeds fans had the sort of the fit, their heads down and they were chuntering it was going to be a long way home they were sort of saying but I thought well yeah, I know. That obviously, they're, they're they're having a really up and down season, but I, I think I'm with you. I think the injuries on that for going into the game and then on the game had a had a big impact on on the outcome. I would ask the the supporters of Leeds, and I, I mean Leeds runners and Leeds United. Do you ever listen to the words of the song that you sing? <laughs> because it talks about ups and downs and stuff, but it seems you like the ups. But when the downs come around, you're all blaming everyone. Well, no, they're only blaming Daryl Alford in the same well, way that yeah. uh, Wakefield fans are, are blaming Tom Lyon. And which at, least, is, oh, yeah. at least no one's sold your stadium to p- purchase Sampdoria or something. So. It's never one player's fault, is it? No, no matter what happens. It's never and one and to be fair, it's, it's never a winger's fault either. Uh, but you've got severe structural issues if you're just blaming it's a, a winger. It's a 17 man uh, team effort and it's 80 minutes, so, you know. In the last, you know, ten years at Wakefield, it's either been Tom Lynham or James Child being retired. Now, so <laughs> that, that was one of my favourite messages we had on the pro in, in the old Radio Yorkshire days, blaming you for Wakefield losing because we never won any games. You must leave, but because we were rubbish. Um, any any refereeing controversies? Did you pick up? Ben Reynolds getting sent well, off. Well, bear in mind, I haven't seen any action from Sunday because oh. uh, it was my son's second birthday party. So uh, I've seen one or two. Clips of tries that fabulous St Helens try uh, oh. that I saw on Twitter it was just incredible. That Tommy making some flat. offload pa- pass, <laughs> oh, it was incredible. So no, I haven't seen the send off. I don't know anything. Send off was just so funny. yeah. So I've not I've not really. Seen and we've had the discipline around. You got two. Yeah, match, everyone's been two matches. matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think really there was much controversy on the Saturday. To be honest, mm-hmm. I know one or two people were concerned about the first sim bin on the first game, um, but it's a late challenge. It's on a kicker. It's high. You know, I think it, it makes it difficult for a referee to perhaps not sim bin and then a few minutes later there's an opportunity where the referee's gonna take it with both hands and and show balance in the fact that, you know, Coot I think ends up going off for HIA mm. anyway, but it, yeah. you know, he's, he's clearly hit directly in the head. Yes he was falling, so there's a mitigating circumstance, so the sim bin seemed uh, spot on to me. So I, I, you know, from a, a referee's perspective, magic weekend is a challenge because you've got usually for the first time all six games on TV back to back all with a video referee and so automatically the referees under under great, greater scrutiny on their video referees and and you've got ten jobs to do because if you're not refereeing your video ref if you're not video ref you touch judge and if you're not touch <laughs> yeah, judge you're, all double up you're getting much. the drinks in so yeah 
So, um, but no, in terms of the decision making, it's you know from one game to the next, it's you've got to have consistency across your competition because if you don't, then it highlights it. Yeah, I, I think Aaron Moore came in for a bit of criticism early in the was it the Lee game that he did, your game. But oh, I, for, what for something? No, I think they do quite a lot of set restarts. Oh, and, oh was it? It might have been Marcus Griffiths gave a lot of set <laughs> restarts, but no, I, I don't think the ref, any referee was. Uh, Marcus do, does like to give quite a few set restarts. To be yeah. fair, but well, I, I didn't see that. Voice. I didn't see that game, and, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being tongue in cheek there. I, I heard a, a comment about the slowness of one of the games. Yeah, Rowan Smith was talking. Rowan about Smith that, was complaining about the, the casket. Yeah, but I, I saw a bit of that game. It, it, the second half, it didn't seem especially close to me. And look, you know, when the referees sit down and do the reviews, Opta will have started all the play the ball speeds, and, and they'll be able to determine whether whether the play the balls were slow or not. Yeah, and I think again, you know. Players are making a lot of errors in their own quarter, which is not so many. Errors. There were so many errors in that Castleford Leeds yeah. game. There was so many. Two, to be honest, two poor teams actually. Yeah. <laughs> no, they, they were. And, and again, you know, no, it's close. If people but want again, to point a ref- game being close isn't the same as a game being quality. No, absolutely not. Uh, and, and and that point remains for the week before when uh, Leeds played sort of Saints, 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 Saints and the Golden Point game. Yeah. It wasn't actually in terms of quality. It wasn't the best quality game. Was it entertaining? Yes, it was, but it probably wasn't as good as the Warrington League game on the same night, which I'd said to you I thought would be a cracking mm. game, and it, it wasn't from the bits I saw of it. Hull KR Wigan the it. night before was uh, went to Golden Point as well. Oh, was yeah. a, I thought that was a better was, quality, was a better quality game, quality game than game. the Leeds game. Yeah, yeah. but the uh, fans have voted. They like Golden Point. Yeah. They were all Nothing. tuning in. in the, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Big, yeah. big viewing figures for Golden Point games, yeah, yeah. we were told. Yeah, and but, ultimately, that's why Golden Point was brought in. It was brought in because, yeah. because there was evidence that... People will tune in when they know their games are going to Golden Point. So, but I go back to what's the point of Magic Weekend if there isn't an outcome at the end of it? So, if Golden Point excites people, particularly those yeah. who haven't watched many of the previous eighty minutes, but they'll tune in like we do when we hear there's a penalty well, shootout. Yeah. Who, who did not then... watch Ross County versus Partick Thistle yesterday? Straight, <laughs> straight. Right, he's finished out rugby league. Straight over. Fantastic. Oh, I that. Oh, I mean, great. for me, I personally don't like Golden Point no. because it ends up being a drop goal of thorn if you're not careful. Um, but then it is in the five minutes before you go to Golden Point. Possibly, but then it just. So when nine up, missed one pointers in that lease and Helen's. But then you end up with which half of them came before. Fifteen Golden minutes Point. of Golden Point, the last five plus the ten. But I, look, I'm not a big fan of it, but I know why we have it, and, I, and and for that reason, I can accept why we've got it. It must be a Jewsbury thing because Anthony Byrne has written to the Rugby League Express, Rugby League and League Express. And he's saying that we should get rid of Golden Point because when he came back from national service in 1954, which is before ITV existed, so before anyone would have mentioned Philip Schofield, uh, if we'd had Golden <laughs> Point in 1954, we wouldn't have had the big crowd at Odsall and the history of rugby league would be different. You know, because bloody filled in Odsall because we don't have to bang on about that all the time. <laughs> Do we mention Hull? And it's not that it's long it. ago that we got rid of Challenge Cup finals as a replay. replay it was still exactly. down. It was on, yeah. in the last I don't know ten years or something that mm-hmm. it was still down as replays. They just didn't end up with draws. Luckily, at the end, or <laughs> unluckily, at mid, the mid, end of eighty minutes. Ellen Rowe, I, I, I couldn't that. imagine going to Wembley and then not seeing a result. That seems bizarre. So for I know, can it, remember nineteen eighty two. Mm. We went back to Ellen Road. So people people not know. walk away like just deflated. Mm. As just. It was just an anticlimax. Yeah, they were just going, I don't know if I can afford to go exactly. on Thursday. Yeah. Imagine yeah. today people saying, you know, pay another 20 quid, come on. Well, more than that, with this congested fixture list that we've got, yeah. when, can you come and have the Challenge Cup final yeah. um, in, uh, in oh, this like... o- uh, October the 25th? So Golden Point will be here to stay, there's no doubt yeah. about that, because it's, it's just another layer of drama. Yeah. And, I, I, and I, drama I, I sells. Like and, and, and sport is about winners and losers. Yeah. It is what it is. Hull yeah, and it is what it is. beat Warrington in a game which had, I think, the best kits of the weekend. And I've got to say, whoever signed off Liam Wakefield, disgraceful. That was shocking. Absolutely shocking. I'm assuming the RFL have no say in the Magic Weekend kits, but someone should have thought, right, Lee have got this white shirt with bits on and dark shorts, and Wakefield have got a grey shirt with a V and dark shorts. No. Come on now. I think the shirts work. Wakefield was work. about three quid worth of shirts. I do, I do think that having a specialist shirt and a story behind mm. it really works. Um, and, and, you know, I wouldn't discourage clubs from doing it, but could you not just liaise <laughs> amongst you when you know what the fixture is and say, our kit's going to be for this cause and it'll be that design? 
with the greatest respect, you should never wear grey. Well, we've had this discussion before, haven't we? I mean, I, I saw a, a, a but there were some great kids Swinton against Featherston at the weekend. Oh man, yeah, but Swinton in white, blue, a blue shirt yeah. with a white V with white shorts. Uh, Featherston in blue and white with white shorts. I mean, it's just madness. I don't know what's going on there. Whether that was the kit directive or whether it was a mistake, but that's clearly, <laughs> clearly not right. I but, do, I do think though that you know the Doddy Weir kit was great. Yeah, I yeah. thought the um, the Saints kit I didn't think was going to work when you heard oh it's, it's sort of Whitehaven chocolate and well, it did, didn't and it? actually yeah. you know when you hear that's the kit they wore 150 years ago and it worked it it, it was great. I, yeah. I thought the whole kit was was good. I've completely forgotten the name of the really famous player Warrington side a couple of years ago legendary player played about two games Andrew Jones no 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 no. Um, not Andrew Jones no a couple of years ago he retired and then he came back GI Greg Inglis oh, right. got it not <laughs> Warrington have got more value for me from him than Josh Maguire who's going to get another long ban because he can't keep his gob shut seemingly I don't think it's I mean, his gob shut it's what he says when he opens it I mean Liam Watts gets banned all the time but at least it's for rugby reasons because you know he can't control his arms or whatever but so did he not play this weekend? No, because he was already under under the he's at tribunal this week. Right. Wait for the game. same issue that he was at the beginning of the season. But for me that that's probably it. He'll either fa- get found guilty, in which case if he gets found guilty he'll get charged with some similar to what he was charged with before, or he'll get not guilty. There won't be a halfway house in there. Because they'll either say there's insufficient evidence to demonstrate the proof, the threshold of proof or whatever, or he will be guilty and therefore he'll get a long ban. So it's one or the other. Blame Lee's kit. Um, James McDonnell sent off against <laughs> St Helens <laughs> for allegedly was. punching Johnny, Johnny Lomax. Lomax. Oh, okay, right, Seen yes. on the evidence of a touch judge. Yeah. Lomax comes up with blood, possibly even thinks he's been punched. So the decision to send him off is on the word of the touch judge justified. The footage is looked at, there's no evidence, but he gets a two game ban. He then appeals on the basis of the fact that there is no evidence and they go oh yeah there's no evidence you don't have to have your ban <laughs> I, I get why he was sent off yeah I think they presented additional evidence at the hearing didn't they of, yeah, of, but... of Johnny Lomax having a cut to his eye yeah. which demonstrated that this injury had already pr- occurred prior so there was some prior evidence because they ha- well, if you go to but there was no appeal, evidence you have to present something point. additional well look I, I, I was apparently look I was surprised that they charged it to be honest because there have been number of other incidents in the past where players have been dismissed and even for referee abuse where they can't seem to demonstrate it on 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 the pitch or there's a piece of foul play that happens on a championship game on the blind side of the camera <laughs> that you've got a touch judge on a referee that can see it but the camera can't and they've not charged it so I was surprised that they mm. charged it to be honest um, now whether they charged it on the basis of yes they've got a touch judge report here and so they, they back the touch judge's support uh, report, but I, it didn't surprise me he got not guilty. No. And that's not to say, by the way, that he didn't punch him. I'm not saying that the, the touch judge necessarily got it wrong, but look, it, to send a player off is a big decision. So one would hope that the touch judge was adamant about what he saw and ultimately reported to the referee. And the referee really it doesn't have any option. Well, he, he has almost no option. If, if if a touch judge is saying, "I've just witnessed player X." hit player Y directly with a punch in the face you're a brave man to, to go against your touch it was just the charge I just thought you know look at the evidence because people were saying didn't say anything the television cameras were saying we didn't say anything mm. but to then charge him and to then have that charge knocked down I think is it's almost where the well, the procedure of deciding how you're going to grade it and, and what the punishment is doesn't fit the crime and you, you're opening yourselves up then to look ridiculous Possibly the reverse argument is they've let it, they've let it play out in the full due process. So in effect, it's gone to court, hasn't it? And, yeah. they, and they've let the case go to court as opposed to the, the Crown Prosecution Service saying no, we're not going to we're not going to drop. Yeah. yeah, we're not going to pr- proceed with it. So they've let it go the full course, and 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 justice has been seen to be served, hasn't it? Yeah. The danger in that is that you end up potentially looking a little bit silly, but. Look, somebody might have produced another angle that showed there was a punch. Mm. I don't know. I, I've been surprised because you know there's in, there's enough Sky camera angles. Absolutely. And they would have had access. Norm, what normally happens is Sky would normally at the end of the game would put all the different angles of an incident together on a tape. Yeah. And that would go to the RFL. So they would have, in theory, and I'm not saying they did, but in theory they should have had access to every single camera angle 
and if it doesn't get picked up on every single camera angle then you have to you do have to question whether actually the, the touch judge what he did see what he thought was a punch wasn't and look that's fine yeah. I, don't, I, th- I, don't, I don't think anybody had a problem with the fact that if somebody genuinely saw that yeah. then if there's evidence that that didn't happen why go to the point no I accept that point I didn't think he would be charged so I was surprised so Law and Order match review panel that's what I'm going to pitch to uh, IT me I'm going to go on the telly there um, Holbeek Warrington in the final game of the weekend I got distracted by Kits um, and another topsy-turvy game Warrington you know can't say they didn't bother can you they're at the top of the table but um, they, they've dropped off from their, where they were at the start and this is this is something you can throw at a Warrington is that they may start the season well but the whole point of this thing which is why St Helens have won so many grand finals and why Leeds have won so many grand finals is because they know when to win or how to win at the end of the season and why they still haven't proven that to us yet now we're not there yet of course but you would have fancied them to beat Hull before the match. Hull have got better, of course. You certainly but... fancied them when they went 12 0 up early <laughs> yes. on. Um, and I think that would be the concern for Daryl Powell more than anything that having got into a position of absolute preemptive, even Tony Smith was saying, you know, at half time, I really don't know how much energy that amount of defence has taken out of us. And Hull came out at the beginning of the second half and blew them away, um, which is to Cole's credit. Um, well done, Josh Griffin, on getting his, his hat trick as well. But Hull played some lovely rugby. and and for a while, Warrington couldn't live with that. Which again, I would be worried if I was um, not worried. I, don't, no. you know, I, I think Daryl Powell <laughs> must look at the what what a team needs to win the big games and say it's not quite there yet. Because his record in finals would suggest that. Oh, no, I haven't said that. Um, Josh McGuire could have played safe. Kevin, but he was injured. There you go. So even more value for money. Um, that was Magic Weekend, um, and all in all, it was all right. On the field was great, the weather was great, the atmosphere was really good. Um, it's whether it has a future, and I think um, I think the one thing that keeps emerging from Magic Weekend is I don't think there are too many sports could have all the teams in right. one place at one time, and that's a USP of a Magic style weekend. And we need to trade on that. We're not perfect in our behaviour; we we never have been. But um, what we do when we get together in a festival type atmosphere, it was wonderful at about half past eleven just as the gates were opening to be stood near that, that uh, grass where the uh, gate is into the Chinatown, that grassy mm. area. And there were so many people of different kits all having a coffee or an early beer or a picnic or just embracing each other. And not many sports could do that. Yeah, I, I think it's a special event. I do, honestly. I, I, I hope it stays in one form or another. Uh, White and a good when they have the ball, but when they don't, they can't hold the team out for long, says Kevin. And he watches them every week, so he would know. Um, in the championship, quickly down the card, uh, Batley beat York, nearly 3,000 people. Free there. entry, yeah. and yeah. Um, our, our good friends well, across the UK were uh, um, curtain raised. Well done, everybody. I spoke to Andrew Henderson last week, so go watch that video. I mean, it wasn't exclusive, it was part of the press conference, I just thought I'd pop along and ask him some questions. Craig Lingard did well to get from Newcastle yeah. the final. He wore that to... bucket hat. He's bucket hat. He's, he, he's, started he started it. it. He started it. Um, Featherson beat Barrow 64-4 that was the game with the, the, the colour clash uh, Swinton won at Keithley 32-28 so that's not like it was what's happened at Keithley? well they've got no coach well they uh, have a coach well they have a coach Jaimel uh, Coleman I think is uh, coaching them at the but moment, again changing it? the coach and um, saying that they expected more from that squad has backfired yeah I think there's more to it than that because the results Okay, they hadn't won. They, they they had some mixed results, but I'm not the way you'd expect, aren't they? I'm not. Sure, yeah, I'm not sure I would have expected Keithley to have been much more where they were at the time. They've, they've dropped down the table a little bit now, haven't There's they? Still only two wins outside the playoffs. Yeah, it's but it's the championship is such a tight competition. Mm-hmm. It is. I mean, I don't want the, the league table. What you're in ten points on eleventh with Keithley on, on on ten and York on ten points. So that's nine positions nine, ten, and eleven all on ten points. You're not far off to. I mean, Halifax. How well, how well Halifax have played. They're only in sixth, mm. and Bradford, having got rid of their coach, a fifth on sixteen points. So, uh, other than other than Featherstone, it's all to play for realistically. Uh, they won the ball. So it's twenty-eight twelve at Newcastle on the Friday night. Uh, Whitehaven beat Sheffield. That's the big result of the weekend. Yeah, that's yeah. a great, 40 points great for victory for them. 
Um, to lose 28, Halifax 22, so obviously the Panthers winning at half time pushed them. And the other result. Again, the... 5,000 there is mm. not a bad. Was it somebody said that Toulouse haven't had a home game for six that. weeks? <laughs> Sounds about right, doesn't it, with the way our fixtures fall? And uh, London, the other big result in the Championship, winning away at Widnes. Well, they're, they're improving, aren't they, London? Because they they were sort of towards the bottom end of the table. Mm. They're climbing the table slowly, aren't they? And they're recruiting. With the, sign, good. the signings, they've obviously saved some money to spend. You know, from May onwards, uh, and they're spending some money, and they've they've got a new coach going in. Um, so, yeah, interesting to see how they they go in the second half. I of think the they're, the they're I think they'll make the six. Yeah, I think they probably will. Um, Kevin said that, uh, the Aussies have copied our Magic Weekend, so it must be good. I mean, it's, it's strange that they're copying something rather than us copying off them, haven't we? But there you go. And Matt says Mark Wilson's commentary excellent again. Who knew? Who knew? Uh, League One didn't come as a surprise to us, did it? Well, the more, more I don't think he was wearing a bucket hat. Was he not wearing? No, I don't think he so. needs one. North Wales, oh, that's a bit harsh. North Wales won at London Scholars, sixty points to six. Oh, was that was that the game where it was forty-two nil at half time, but um, Scholars went to kick a penalty goal, even though they were forty yeah. points behind. There was a wonderment. Steve Mascot asked a question on Twitter about people getting sent off for punching, and London Scholars replied, and I thought, is this Steve? Yeah, he, <laughs> he finds himself. I don't know. And I, I assume it wasn't, but you know, I don't often reply to the forty twenty account. Uh, Doncaster won at Midlands fifty four twenty six. That was close at half time. New coach at Midlands, yeah, Mark yeah, Dunning from Bradford. Yeah, another I surprise. Think, yeah, it was a surprise, mm-hmm. wasn't it? And I, I didn't think, even know they were looking for a coach. To be quite honest, I, I think Lee Beat is going there as well to join his old mate. I need to. Uh, we were going to have Richard Squires on last year, and then we never got him on. So there's there's another one on the list. Uh, Alden beat Hunslet forty points to twenty. That's a good score, isn't it? It's a, it's a good win for Alton, mm. isn't it? And uh, working to meet Cornwall 54 nil, And again, which got BBC coverage because it's the longest trip in rugby league. And there was a, a bit of a hoo ha <laughs> About the when it was time. starting off, yeah. Yeah. Um, bit of bother this week for uh, working, because they, well, it's not for working to, but they travel to North Wales who haven't got a place to play their game on Sunday. They've tweeted earlier today. So ah. um, that's a bit of a problem. Um, Don't they need to ring Ryan Reynolds? Can't he open the gates yeah. to Wrexham? You can have it as a, you know, before the Wakefield game. No, our pitch is good. We'll be reaching the, the pitch, won't we, at Wrexham? We'll play, well. play on the beach. Um, so, uh, yeah, a bit of a problem for North Wales this week. Uh, is there a stadium big enough in Cumbria to host Magic Weekends, Asterix? Was that the stadium big enough to host a game in the World Cup? This is an unfortunate thing, but that's that's council's way of politics. Uh, this week in Super League, on Friday, it's Cass Salford, Lee Hull and Saints versus Wigan. Saturday, Catalan Tolkien and Warrington Huddersfield. That's on TV. The latter of those games on Sky. And Sunday is the big one. Uh, the one we all look forward to. Wakefield versus Leeds. Come on, Wakefield. Championship. Sheffield York on Friday night. The Andrew Henderson derby. That, that, that league's full of them. What, full of Andrew Henderson <laughs> derby? <laughs> Feather is in the championship on Saturday. Which Feather's Featherston are building up first v second. But I, 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 no, they're fourth now, aren't they, to lose. But we're down as the um, second favourites for promotion. I, I don't know. Featherston are just too good at the yeah, moment. Yeah, they're too good. Uh, Barra Keithley Mark Carella due back for Feathers oh, there you go another, another link uh, Bradford London Newcastle Batley Swinton Halifax Bradford right London. Mm. Mm. and in League One um, London Scholars Oldham on Saturday and on Sunday it's Cornwall Jews which will be back in action the league leaders Doncaster Rochdale and North Wales versus Worthington um, I'm trying to think of the big news this week um, other than i tell you what here's the thing um I've just seen Origin in the paper. Origin was on last week. I, it was it, fabulous. It was all right, wasn't it? It was brilliant. Um, Again, the best team didn't win mm. in terms of all the stats and the um, status of the players that wore New South Wales blue. You would have thought that they would have beaten a Queensland team that suffered a couple of injuries and that were picking a couple of players who were out of position. But there is something about that resilience and spirit mm. that they're almost impossible to beat. Happy. Go the Maroons. The mo- mm. Ralph in Morons. That's the only other story. Yeah, well, good luck, Ralph, in your quest to destroy Rabini. Uh, thanks for that. <laughs> the government are great, aren't they? they did that surprise captain. you? Uh, I suppose it did. Yeah. Um, you know what the next announcement will be? Magic weekend for Rabini. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it does. It, it did surprise me, I suppose, to some extent. But when you when you think about it and the work that. The, Ralph did with the government around, you know, rugby league getting the mm-hmm. uh, yeah, loan, etc. And uh, in actual fact, when you think about it, and his experience in rugby league and a CEO, uh, you know, 
it's not surprising actually for all no, I think it says more about rugby union that if you were to go back a few years and mm. say you've got some troubles we're going to send in a troubleshooter with a rugby league background they would have gone they're not coming anywhere near well I don't think they have a choice do they but I think it's really interesting again the relationship between the two sports where rugby union are at the moment looking for more rugby league expertise not just on the mm. coaching side but now on the administrative side I, I, I'm intrigued by how this will play out yeah. so, you know Ralph goes in and says well I think you should have 13 men yeah. those line outs are a waste of time <laughs> those fat yeah. I suspect it probably won't be along <laughs> those lines <laughs> he, he wasn't perfect and he did lots. He did some bad things, but he also did some good. Things. Oh, I think in terms of his reputation with government mm. and the way he handled COVID yeah. and the negotiations that he went and fought his corner at Downing Street, he is perceived to be, um, you know, an administrator of merit. Mm. And Karen Morehouse was saying the same that he gets underestimated because sometimes he he comes over in a in a bluff manner. Um, but actually, you know, he, he he played a blinder with keeping the sport going at one of its most difficult times. I just think it's really interesting that whether they've got a say in who comes in or not, that somebody with a pure rugby league background is going to be advising rugby union how they move their sport forward. I, I would never have known that to happen in the past. No, maybe not. But actually, as a sport, it's not a badly run sport, rugby league. No, for what it you is, know, for what um, it is, it generally cuts his cloth accordingly. You know, and for all the critics of the salary cap, uh, you know, it's not that often that we have clubs. I, go, I just can't envisage a meeting know. in the wood-panelled offices of Twickenham, <laughs> where the owners of rugby union are being told what they need to do by someone who is versed in rugby league. It's a really interesting mm. dynamic, and uh, I say I think it says more about the state they're in at the moment. But um, they're in a mess. Rugby union's in a oh, mess. They're in a massive it? mess. It's hilarious, isn't it? It's absolutely hilarious. Well, it's not they, they've been they've so been um, bailed out too often by an mm. international game and um, and not address the issues that they have. Which not for discussion here. I just think going to you know even the government saying you need to mm. get a rugby league guy in. I've never mm. known that happen mm. before. Uh, now, can you imagine Dudley Wood? Do you remember Dudley Wood? Was he one of the fifty-seven old fans? Yes, go. Yes, bring a rugby league man in. He can tell us what to do. It just where's, wouldn't have happened. Mm. Where's the investigation on the BBC? That's what I'm saying. What into Dudley Wood? <laughs> it wasn't that. Um, magic weekend this weekend in Newcastle for the uh, Wheelchair Super League. Mm. Leeds versus Wal- Warrington, Wigan, London, and Halifax versus Hull. So if you're in Warrington this week, if you're in Newcastle this week, University weekend, of Northumbria, go watch some wheelchair rugby. I don't think it's going to be on anymore. Is no, it, it's though? not on our league, which it's is a shame it. because the whole idea of having inclusive weekends in was that we would all be able to see it, and uh, I don't see the point of that if you can't see it. Mm. You imagine the scenario, dear listener. I feel like something Edward the Pad be able to say, but. <laughs> Dear viewer. But in a French accent, imagine podcast listener. If I said to you, right, here's a podcast, but it's going to be on a, a, a separate app and you have to download the app and register and you can watch and watch and listen to this program. Well, that'd be foolish, wouldn't it? Because you're on YouTube here. Everyone in the world can watch it, apart from in North Korea, but hello, Pyongyang. Uh, and anyone can download the podcast anywhere in the world. So why do we keep putting things that we say are great? Right, the NCL's great. Right, so what's it on our league? Right. No one else is going to be able to watch it because they're going to have to register. They're not going to register. So what's the point in bullying up this thing? Where's the women's game's gone off Twitch? But we know why they do it for the hourly because it's about creating a, a database of people that you can tap into at a future time, probably next year, and sell a package of here uh, is a Super League game once a week, and you can spend x amount and you'll get a subscription to it because that's what's going to happen probably mm. I'm, I'm imagining by the yes. way I don't know but electronic season that's, that's my understanding is what, what what will happen and that's been a long run up to the wicket really with our league so I get your point put it on YouTube put it on somewhere else but but the RFL have been putting their eggs into that basket to try and encourage people to sign up mm. to it and it's a little bit like someone said to me yesterday um, paying for parking these days on the street, nobody carries cash, or very few people who carry cash. It's, it's, there aren't that many machines that you can put cash in <laughs> nowadays. So, if you don't take um, Apple Pay or whatever, contactless, you've got to download an app. And some people are like, oh, "It's too much. I've got enough mm-hmm. apps on my phone. I don't want to have any more apps." Or they're of an age where they haven't got mm-hmm. a phone or the yeah. desire to download yeah. an app. So I get the point that you're trying to say that yeah. by doing that you are restricted and they are to some extent but it's a, I guess it's a longer it's a longer strategy. I'm not sure how much data you get from West Hull versus, West Hull, 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 versus Hull Dockers. No. 
They still have docks. They're still a thing. Yeah, they're there. Mm. Yeah, the ferry's going from. Um, happy second birthday to uh, Faye Gaskins and Eve. Because it is the anniversary of her celebrating a try at the Champions right. Cup final. Georgie Rosh. Uh, five year deal. Was big news, wasn't it, this What's week? It's all about I, five years. One of the years. highest paid NRLW right. players. Yeah. yeah. That's some commitment from Newcastle. They mm. obviously feel they've got a, a diamond they can polish there. Mm. But that's great for the Keep women's game over here. That, yeah. You know, that is um, almost uh, you know the biggest compliment the, the NRLW have paid to us is that they see one of our stars is right up there with the very best of them so. uh, you know it's great and for women, a, women's uh, origin was a fantastic game I didn't see any of it but if, you, if a you're a young game. girl playing rugby league in this country well, that is fantastic news isn't it because mm-hmm. if you're aspiring to be you know playing in women's super league then you will probably aspire to play in the NRL in, in, and it's, in it's not just women's not just girls rugby league either it's rugby union as well because they are bringing everyone who is a talented female athlete on board in Australia and giving them a go and it's going to be the biggest female rugby league com- a rugby competition in the world mm. if it's not already and you're seeing Georgia Rose of course play for Castleford in 2018 Woman of Steel in that Challenge Cup Although final we, young, uh, girl, young girl of yeah, Steel the Challenge Cup final we did all those years ago I mean, the slight advantage that it puts from a national perspective is that you bring in, similar to the men's team isn't it that you've got some of your best players mm. playing in the NRL so you bring that experience back and hopefully that that helps. And if the next World Cup is in New Zealand, Stroke Pacific, Mm. you've already got some of your core talent out there that knows the opposition that they're playing against, which can only help. Just hopefully don't get used to playing 10 less minutes. (laughs) Lazy, lazy, lazy. The women's origin was 70 minutes. I know, that was was all about. That was brutal. Um, It was amazing. Saints Wigan is on the the, um, Sportsman on YouTube. (laughs) <laughs> to uh, prove a point on Sunday afternoon at one o'clock, so that'd be worth. I think it's at the uh, Southern Wicked as well, so there might be a decent crowd turn up there. You'd hope so. Um, Huddersfield Warrington, the other game on Sunday, and in Group Two, Barrow of Castleford, Bradford, Salford, and Lee Featherson hopefully all get played as well. So well done, Cardiff Demons. They won the start of their title defence. It's a shame they're not showing York Cardiff on the Sportsman. They're showing the. Wine, uh, Wigan Huddersfield game which I know was close the last time they met but I'm speaking from a perspective I like to see Cardiff more but there you go Dex says can we get the magic weekend in France if they pay for it <laughs> we can't broadcast Catalan Dragons game so can't see Sky taking truckloads over there at the moment it'd be nice but I think we're complaining that Newcastle's too far <laughs> they're on someone's phone um, has anything else happened No further on what's going to happen with the. I did enjoy people were moaning that the European Championships have been cancelled when they weren't going to pay any attention to it anyway. But you know. there will be some international rugby league this autumn, whether they World Cup qualifiers or not. When they're, they're not far off announcing the Southern Hemisphere what they're doing. I think, I think one of the things Rodri talked about didn't know whether he that was about more international, international sport. Next year there might yeah. be a program announced by the end of next year. Yeah. This year. <laughs> Well, that's plenty of time to cancel it, that's, that's good. Isn't Anybody it? who hasn't bought Kevin Sinfield's book yet oh, should buy it. Do you have some copies available? I do know where there are some copies yeah. available. I feel like having seen it in the flesh and the man in the flesh sign is a machine. He is a machine. And then when you walk towards the shop, there is his head again, his book and everything. It's um, if you want revelation, rugby revelation probably not but if you want to know about leadership friendship it's a wonderful story mm. well, we know his rugby career anyway mm. it's, it's, it's quite well documented there, there isn't a lot of stuff you probably won't know <laughs> he won lots of things and, uh, and his documentary is up for an award and along with yep. Rob's documentary is up for yep. an award so I have two different email addresses to vote for them both yeah. <laughs> although but, I think the voting is closed now, no, is it? Oh, vote early and vote often but you know again it's one of these the problem with the NTAs is it's Popularity contest is the wrong phrase, but it's that kind of thing. It's not, it's not a BAFTA. You can't trust anything the public vote on anyway, can you? <laughs> um, so that's it. Well, I think we're back next week. There's no more bank holidays now for ages. Excellent. Um, so next week, celebrating Leeds' <laughs> Wakefield's first win of the season. Portion of humble pie on the desk. Oh. Is, it, is it magazine to press this end of this week? Sunday. 
Are you, are you going to be at uh, Bellevue then? No? Yeah, you're going to be there anyway. Is it a match of the month? No. no. <laughs> so do I need, need to referee next week's podcast between between the two of you if there's any arguments? No, there won't be any. <laughs> <laughs> Long past Kerry. <laughs> Long past Kerry. <laughs> just given up. Bring your cards though, just in case. You know. <laughs> just completely given up. Um, James, we'll see you next week. Look we'll be back to next it. week. Uh, we'll be back. Thank you very much for your uh, patronage on YouTube and patronising us. Uh, and we'll see you again next week.